So how do you do a floor system when you have balloon framed walls? Thanks for asking. Well, we're gonna frame it like a deck. Our floor is gonna hang off ledgers. So that means we're gonna attach LVL to the walls with the strong tight SDWS timber screws. Decks have higher loads than floor systems do by quite a fair amount. So it's all an engineer design. So think of it this way. If you watch um, Kyle Stumpenhorst, think of this as like a barn dough where all the walls are tall. You're gonna ledger the LVL, the joists are all gonna sit in hangers. And then of course, they're gonna span over these walls. It's all engineered with safety factor. It's very strong. Action. More. More. A little more. Yeah, you're good. Still good? Yeah. You can't say that word. Oh. I'll bleep it. Small person. Small person. Can't say that either. Height challenged individual. No one gave me any warning. Look at that one standing away. Show you what we're working on and a couple of tips and tricks. So you can see that we've got balloon framed walls. This is kind of what the floor system is looking like. So there's our PWT inch and three quarter by nine and a half ledgers all the way around. We're going to install this last one, which is it's a full 23 foot stick. I know because I shot it with, ah, that's the beep I heard. This turned off. I'll show you how to use this, by the way. Anyway, here is a tip. Every once in a while, we do something that convinces us that we're smart enough to keep doing what we're doing. We have one win for every 99 whiffs. So many years ago, old Kyle and me, we got in the habit of using boneyard eye joists, whatever the lumberyard had, we could buy them dirt cheap. We'd use them for racks. Like if we had real squirrely two by 12 rafters, we'd screw it to the underside, plane it all out till the roof was on, either leave it or take it off. Depending on the case, we would use them to brace forms. Pretty genius. Ah, it's, it's yeah. the only good idea I've ever had. They're nice and lightweight. They're super straight. You could do this with a nine and a half inch joist. Typically we'll put a screw on each end and then in the middle, if it's everything's nice and tight to that eye joist, good enough. They can get a little squirrely with Doug first studs, and that's where we'll probably go every one, if not every other. Yeah, We're using two pieces with a nice healthy overlap. I wanna overlap at least two joist bays. I don't know, that just seems like then we're more likely to get nice and laser straight. To me, this is extremely important because our floor system is going to be our diaphragm and I want that to be just perfect. One of the difficulties can be when they're really tall studs is trying to keep it nice and straight with a minimum of bracing down here so that we can still work. Bam, a couple of eye joists screwed to the wall. It makes these things laser straight. I mean, the eye joists are just dead nut straight. And so even though we're using LVL studs and they're nice and straight because they're so long We want a nice even plane right below the top plates So we just cut out that end stud and one of the advantages of that is that it minimizes the amount of bracing We're not bracing through here at all down because we know we're plumb there and we know we're plumb right here at this wall Now we got a place to put some of our tools We're using up the power wool on edge and just shoving it in because the ledger like there it's going to cover between our fire block line which is also our sheathing panel edge blocking we need to insulate behind the ledger because no one will get to that later these are the little giant planks we bought a couple years back on the reachcraft bronco i mean we started using these in the 90s finally got rid of our, our very first pair just a couple years ago we have four of these now there's another look that's one of our older pair it's black and that is just fantastic so now we can install this screw it in, lay it out, and do all of the hangers. Yeah, it's just facing the wall. <laughs> oh, I've done so many dumb things. Your keys are in the van. They're on the cup holder on my passenger seat. And if you can't find them, but the car starts, you know they're in there. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna leave that guy going. Let me just sync these all up. Hey, yeah, uh, who has two thumbs and looks like a real moron? Not that guy. I only got one, no. Okay. Oh, this is my favorite part. These planks, dude. Hey, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. There we go. Okay, so I can see the PWT along with all my cameras. Oh, the old, good old days of no cameras. All right, I've got 26 foot 8 and 13. Let's go 26 foot 8 and 10. 
Eight. Yeah, we'll go 316 short. Let me show you this. I, I don't really use laser distance tools. I've got this one from Stabila. We tried them out way back in like 2007, and it was hard for us to see the dot over long distances. Kyle Stumpenhorst told me I need to be using this, so I'm gonna follow his advice. But what's great about this one is it has a camera built into it. Oh, look at that. It's looking right at Kyle's shiner. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So now, if I shoot that right across, let me zoom in. Look at that. It is right at the PWT ledger on the other end. There's my cameras. And then if I tilt this, get rid of the glare, 26 foot, eight and three quarters. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So there you see the number. 26, eight and three quarters. And then you also see exactly where I shot that. Good thing we left all the braces out. Yeah. Look at that. 26 foot, eight and five eighths. Thanks, Kenny. Look at that. Some people are uncomfortable with this. They don't like the idea of the floor system being attached with screws. By the way, watch this. Just pulls everything nice and tight. He really likes those. The criticism is they don't want everything hanging from uh, this ledger that's attached to screws and joist hangers, all that good stuff. But you gotta remember, these screws are designed for decks where the load conditions are higher than a bedroom or a living room. So the engineer takes that into account. We are so over-designed that there will be no risk of any kind of failure, creep, squeaking, nothing like that. That's why we do it. What this gives us, by the way, this attachment with the ledger to the wall and then our sheathing is basically a, the floor is a big giant beam on its side reinforcing all those balloon framed walls. I'm gonna bend these tabs up slightly as I'm gonna line it up with that edge first. Top of the metal seat is flush with the underside of the LVL. Hold it right to the line. I'm gonna make sure that seat is nice and flat. Hey, top of the late morning to you, everybody. So let me show you our approach to bracing. This house lends itself to it a little bit better. We have very few braces to hold everything straight, plumb, and parallel. I used to work with a guy that said that you should have so many braces that you would trip over them and couldn't work. He was a Finnish carpenter. So here's a principle. We have a sheathed wall, which means that the wall that connects to it does not need a brace especially if it's plumb, and we check this. So we're connected to that sheathed wall and this one, no brace needed on the hallway. However, we do need to straighten the hallway, and that's what that spring brace is for. But we can walk, look at that, Jordan can just walk all over, he could even dance. Look at that, and he needs a lot of room for those moves. So, if you can call them that. Then here, because we don't have anything attached to the sheath, then we need to brace that nice and plumb. Because here's the secret weapon couple of extra eye joists screwed to the wall. Those things are laser straight, and I will demonstrate that to you. It is dead straight. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll string line this, and then we'll straighten the wall with braces if needed, but those eye joists are holding it, like right where we want it to be. When we had like an eighth bow, when we released that brace just a little bit, straightened right up. I wonder what he's thinking about. There are all of the eye joists. Cut the second floor. Let me show you what it looks like inside. Pro tip for you. First of all, I apologize for the vertical video. Kyle's phone worked, but my camera crapped out. Because we ordered these continuous, there is less material to handle. You also get a stiffer floor system when they're continuous joists over multi-span. So it goes really fast framing the floor. There's a look at it from up above. So while the guys were framing the floor, I was framing the stairs. I have the studs run long for the half wall so that that is ready to go for later. There we go, all the way around. An engineered connection. So that wall was two stories high. That wall, that wall behind me, this guy. And so here's what it looks like upstairs. We went ahead and set the ridge beam because 
we don't have access with the forklift. I don't want anybody to be up super high. So anyway, there is where we're at. This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. As you know, I've been using Squarespace. It's gonna be six years here in just a couple of months. It is the easiest thing, one of the easiest things I've ever done. It's even easier now with the AI tools. So here's my personal opinion. Everybody needs a website. You need it as a landing page that maybe points people to your gallery, your services, what sets you apart. But we don't really have time. I'm busy framing, editing content. I don't have a whole lot of time for that kind of stuff. So that's why I went with Squarespace back in 2020. That's why I still use Squarespace. So head on over to Squarespace because you can use the coupon code AWESOMEFRAMERS to save 10% off a domain or your first website. Just give it a try. Just go set something up quickly. If it seems easy to you, then keep going. Squarespace.com slash AWESOMEFRAMERS. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Check it out. We've got a dance floor. Look at that. I say we leave out the walls. We don't need walls. This is, this is my bedroom. This whole thing is my bedroom. So uh, we were going to get the ridge set because it's massive. It's a five and a quarter by 14 by 30, 34 foot long, minus a little bit. But we're all kind of tired and we think we'll just snap lines and go home because we can do that. So that's what we're gonna do. Does that sound okay to you, Kyle? Yes, sir. Sign me up. You, are you sure you don't wanna work late? I'm good. Okay. All right, so we just decided it is too wet to snap lines on the floor. So let's just go ahead and get this beam set. Thirty-three foot ten and thirteen thirty seconds. Look, we checked uh, it. How, how many times are you going to take times. that number? Well, we know that's <laughs> that is a five and a quarter by fourteen Cut by thirty. <laughs> by 35 foot long it'll get cut down to about 34 feet how much does that bad boy weigh so basically the reason why we've got it in here now before walls is because we came in through the window put it on saw horses and then when Kyle comes up and above with the truss jib then he doesn't have to have all the weight of this thing swinging up high he can get into position much more safely because there's not that much room out there can you imagine having this thing up like 20 feet or 30 feet? Yeah, I was thinking about that, but it is pretty slippery. You got it? Or there, now if you need to let it down. It's gonna drop. Go for it, you animal. You filthy animal. Yeah, yeah, that'll just make it easier to get around. Okay, I like to sight through this side because I'm correct handed. Good old LVL. So let's set this bad boy. I'm gonna show you this from a few different angles. We have our rigging points roughly in thirds. We can pivot on the, um, the truss jib, the hook there, we can pivot. Here's the problem, Kyle can't see me. So I have to call out signals and I have to basically tell Jordan what I need him to do. He's gonna translate that into the signals. I don't have a tagline because we just were like, I think this will work out just fine. I'll just use my tape measure. It's like the world's best tagline by the way. Kyle had it really close. You see there, he's leaning. I just was making some mistakes, but it's okay. We're going nice and slow. I have a 12 foot, very stable tripod ladder. I'm like three rungs down from the top. So there's no issues with safety there. We just have to be patient, which patience is our middle name. So look at that, we got it. 
That Cornerstone Industries trust jib, by the way, has just been fantastic. With that shackle and hook in the middle, plus that chain, highly, highly recommend. This is our old school tagline. Okay, here's what I'm Yeah, nice and slow. Keep coming. Rats, man, this is not easy. We're just in, it's like, it's amazing to me. Have him stop. Um, I guess boom out. All right, I think, that, I think I'm doing it all wrong. Let's do this, stop. Have him tilt down. Oh, gosh, Jiminy Crickets. Okay, have him stop. Now, that side's in, but can I tip it? Okay, I have an idea. Have him boom out just a hair. Okay, stop. Now, if I, if he very slowly tilts down, I'm gonna try to aim it in there. So when you get extended out like that, so much of this is the skill of the operator. Let's just say I had all of my signals perfect. It doesn't matter. It, if the operator isn't smooth with the controls, he doesn't stop when I ask for him to stop, this whole thing is just a nightmare. And it becomes very unsafe. But because he's so smooth with the controls, you could see that. The beam's not just flailing around. It's not really at risk of um, knocking me off the ladder. Now here's a top-down view, right? You can see where I'm at on the ladder. There's that uh, Milwaukee tagline, my tape measure. Now, sped up like, I don't even know, 3,000%. 3, I sped this up away quite a bit. It's still not just flopping around. And if you look at the, on the uh, top right there, there's the view from the truss jib. I have this camera mounted with the magnet. See, he's nice and slow. The other thing that you wanna, wanna really think about when you're operating is which of the hydraulic pumps is the smoothest. Generally the tilt, boom in and out and tilt sideways, give you the most nuance. Going up and down with heavy weight and fully extended, it's a lot harder not to just suddenly drop. And you see that Kyle just did a fantastic job with that. Take the rigging down, 12 foot ladder, bibbity boppity, and Bob's your uncle. All right, it's up. It took, it took a few tries, we'll, we'll post the video. But uh, with the one 12 foot ladder and Jordan signaling down to Kyle, you know, you're kind of manhandling it from this side, trying to twist it in. So there it is, giganto beam. All right, the floor is framed. Come on, let's go do a tour of the house. Jordan, watch your step. Watch your step, Jordan. Uh, we used LVL for the stair stringer, so this is such a stout set of stairs that Jordan's mom could probably come up and down them without them squeaking. <laughs> she watches the video, so she's gonna know I said that. Did you guys know that we're mass murderers because we use iJoyce? Doing one of these. Okay, but there is one serious problem with iJoyce. All right, take 11 teen which is two more than 13, if you didn't know. Oh, that was a good catch. Hey, Kyle. Nice catch. Okay, so we've already plumb and aligned everything. However, there's one spot that we haven't. Let me show you that. So this wall here is not connected to anything because it's parallel to the joist, and we don't have it braced yet. When I yank on it, it, it vibrates. You can't even get it to move. What we are going to do, though, is plumb it. the advantage of, LV, of LVL. 